I don't know if that's set for your lo- your height. Oh, it's perfect. Great. I don't know if I'm in frame, but who cares? Okay. <laughs> Not me. Ready? Yes, babe. I'm ready too. That's great. <laughs> you want to take it away, or you want to? Sure. You want to do it together, or? We're doing it already. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. To Pilot On. A new podcast from Grace Helbig and Elliot Morgan. Yeah, this is very exciting for me especially because this is a podcast that is um, primarily but not only about our opinions, thoughts, and conspiracy theories around reality television. Well, we were wanting to basically do something together Mm -hmm. that was universally appealing. Yes. And therefore highly marketable. And we landed on the most obvious thing, which is a lifetime reality show. Well, the thing is, I love reality TV, obviously. You are, um, I think, a little bit more hesitant to indulge in it like I do. But I got you into Married at First Sight. Hard. Yeah. And I'm so, it brings me so much (laughs) joy that you enjoy this show. Or if you don't, you pretend really hard and it's I still love, great. I do love it, but I do get exhausted by it. But yeah. I love, I think, here's what. Here's my justification for being a talking head on this particular podcast. Mm-hmm. I love watching TV with you. Yes, thank you. I love it more than most things. Thank you. One of those uh, reasons, one of the reasons I love it so much is because you have an ability to crack me up a lot <laughs> while watching these things mm-hmm. because the people are insane and mm. you're like a mystery science theater for crappy reality TV Thank that I get you. to personally experience. Yeah, mo- many of those jokes won't be here or because some some of mine at least are kind of, we'll have to find the balance on yeah. what's, like we don't want to be uh, rude to people, but at the same time, mm. I would be lying if sometimes you both of us didn't make jokes that were pretty funny at their expense at their expense that's the word yeah 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 but um but you are fascinated by psychology and emotional intelligence and that (laughs) i think is how i tried to hook you into the allure and appeal of reality tv especially married at first sight because it's not just a bunch of desperate people trying to get TV time. Yeah. But this season, it kind of is. It is that. And it's also, I love the psycho- the psychological aspect of it, but I also love feeling smart mm-hmm. and feeling like we have a really good relationship. Well, that's okay. That's the underlying reason <laughs> that I think I watch reality TV. It's not that I set out to watch it this way, but there is a byproduct in which I feel more confident in the way I handle my life and my relationships yeah, by comparing myself to the situations I see on television. Yes, which are extreme and insane and and maybe fabricated. Sure. There's a lot of, um, yeah, there's a lot of, this isn't real, uh, real reality. <laughs> this is obviously like... It's trash a, TV. It's trash TV. There's lots of constraints. There's lots of production, obviously. And that's what makes it so fun. It's fascinating. And we started... We sold the heck out of that. Yeah. And if you <laughs> (laughs) you guys like Married at First Sight, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, uh, We are starting this so late into the season of uh, Married at First Sight. You know, we're good at what we do. But (laughs) we're quarantined. And I also want people to know that we didn't start this because we're quarantined. We've had this idea for this podcast long before the quarantine um, came into play. Yes. But that is a major factor as to why we're actually executing it right now. Executing it, yeah. Uh, we're doing it now because, and even this, even mm-hmm. with the quarantine, we still have taken forever. <laughs> to oh, record this. yeah. I'm actually shocked that we're doing this right now. I think we would have talked ourselves out of it ten more times before actually sitting down. It, yeah, so, it's let's... the same way that it works with um, the Valley Folk and the Fundamentalists mm-hmm. or the Valley Cast, where it's like we we're gonna do it, but if it right. one person even exhales, like what if we did it? Done. We don't have to do we're, it. We'll, we'll wait. Do it we'll, wait we'll wait. We'll wait. It's buttons. It's pushing buttons, and I don't understand that. So anyway, <clears throat> we push buttons, and now we're recording, and it's happening. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we don't have um, a game plan, so we're just gonna go through what we watched last night on the most recent episode. Well, before, do you want to jump into kind of the concept of yeah. the show as a whole for people who maybe haven't? Sure. Hopefully, you know what the show is, but if you don't know what the 
this show is. The conceit of it is basically all of these singles in their 20s and 30s um, audition to be on this um, this social experiment in which they are paired by experts. That's what we should have called this. Social, social experiment. No, I, mean, I like pilot on. Yeah. Social experiment. The, uh, there's three experts. I'm <laughs> there's three experts. Um, I forget exactly what they're experts in, like sociology. Um, there's pa- a pastor and another woman. <laughs> That's like a counselor. They all act as yeah. counselors. There's like a sexologist, uh, a, a sociologist or psychologist, and a pastor. Yeah, and they function as like the tentpole experts mm-hmm. for this idea yeah. that you can marry a stranger. Mm-hmm. So you, you see them for the first time as you're walking down the aisle. Oh, I love it. And then you, you say your vows that you've pre-written not knowing who this Not knowing person who is, it is or anything about them. And then you say, I do. Yeah. You kiss, you sign a contract yeah. where they're legally married. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they are whisked away for eight weeks through a series of stages from yes. honeymoon to moving in together to meeting each other's families and all that right. stuff. And then at the end of the eight weeks, yes. they decide whether or not they want to stay married together forever and live happily ever after, mm-hmm. or if they want to get a divorce slash annulment, which the show takes care of and make sure that they're supposedly. not resp- supposedly. We assume. Who really knows? Um, all we do know yeah. is that the everyone puts their trust in the hands of these experts to yes. have paired them with their ideal match and another thing you you hooked me on with the mm-hmm. show is the uh the fact that it has a very good like a higher success rate than things like the bachelor sure which so, maybe the most the season we're on now is kind of uh is uh, bringing the bringing the mean or the media down a yeah, little bit it's not flattening a curve at all oh, well, maybe shit. it is actually flattening a curve the uh yeah the success rate is a little uh, all over the place. They have had successes. And as long as you have one, that's considered a success rate. Oh, I thought they've had like a lot. Like they've a, had a handful. They've I would also say more had, than half? Uh, I don't know if it's that much. Really? Oh, I thought it was like seven, 60 or 70% or something like that. I'm not totally sure. I haven't right. kept up on the statistics in that degree. But they have had a handful of their couples that have stayed together get pregnant and they did a whole series about the ones that were pregnant together all at the same time like they documented their experience now to just kind of it feels a little bit like they were rubbing it in everyone's faces like yeah. see look they got pregnant and some of them you're like oh i don't know if that was the right choice for that, them that would that's a very another fun part of the show is not only uh, hoping that as a whole people find love, but also hoping that they don't think they've found love and are marrying someone that it's going to get very bad or having yeah. a kid with someone where it's going to get very bad. Yeah. Um, it's also a very PG reality program. Like <laughs> when you watch The Bachelor, you know they're all shit faced. You know they're being pumped full of like champagne and vodka sodas. And this is very much Ooh. more. Um, Oh, I don't even know how to correctly describe it, but it's very wholesome as it's much lifetime. as lifetime. Yeah, it's lifetime. It's uh it's very um respectful. No, it's just very like basic. It's basic. Yeah, yeah. it's ma- it's definitely like kind of what America like the average person mm-hmm. is like and value like more tra- it's more conservative. Yeah, it's more conservative. That's what um, I'm looking for. Yeah, and it's uh it's sort of like... But this season, I will say, they're having some moments of like breaking the fourth wall and like talking with producers and like having these uh, crises of the actual filming process, which I fucking love so much. It's like... A, it's... Um, yeah, it's like in The Office when they started showing at the end of the series like the boom mic yes. guy. And they're like, oh, they're showing the crew now. And yeah. now they're like, oh, they're at least acknowledging that this is a reality show. Exactly. And that's what I appreciate that so much more because it is so staged. Like the every single room that they're in, every restaurant that they're in is so brightly lit, is so set up like so a set. So uncomfortable. It's all set up like they took a home goods and they just like put some cameras and lights in uh-huh. a corner and they asked them to talk about their finances everyone's blown out and everyone is so you can see every part of their face every when poor, they're crying yeah every poor and then when they're going to bed at night when they crawl into bed the lights are 
still so on. bright they and would, then they're trying me, to be sexy yeah they're like let me climb out of bed and turn the lamp off and they hit a button and nothing changes <laughs> about the darkness of the room um it's yeah it's a little clunky but this season's very fun because people are starting to lose their cool yeah it's wonderful let's get into let's it let's dive in grace okay this last episode that we watched um was basically They had all done their recommitment to each other. They had like a couple week check in where they sat down with experts. They aired their grievances and they've all individually decided whether they want to continue with the process or not. So they're coming off of everyone has just committed, recommitted to each other. What are the odds that all of them on camera said verbatim that they specifically did want to continue on being on the show? (laughs) I mean, thank God we get a whole second half of this season. I would love to see the emails from the the executives and the network that were like, we, you got to put them on cam. Like, legal says you have yeah. to put them on camera we have saying. A lot of, yeah, we have a lot of conspiracy theories about the legalese of this actual show. And because some of the things that they say, can you believe it, are so unnatural for them to say on camera mm-hmm. that it seems like the network... Uh, probably has to have them admit things on camera for the, yes. the legal side of everything. Should we talk about the hmm? a little bit more about the um, the moderate, whatever they are, the, the experts? Uh, uh, sure, you can. What are your thoughts on them? I don't them? like them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this season in particular, and I've talked to Hannah about this, it feels like the experts have fucked up this season, they, and they're really, really working to dig themselves out of their own holes and yes. not admit that they match some bad well, people <laughs> and even <laughs> even before this season they were like i was teetering on really not liking any of them um the, the i want to say contestants but the, the cast yes, the experts oh the experts yeah okay. uh and and uh now with this season they've gone full into like like last night i was really off the one girl did kind of turn things around for me the um the robot that dresses like a crazy stepmom Oh, Viviana? Yeah, Dr. whatever. Viviana? Dr. Viviana, who, yes. who n- hasn't blinked uh, in many seasons. Yeah, I believe that Dr. Viviana is like an animatronic from Westworld. Oh, Goose is here. She's walking around. So if you hear little tap, 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 taps in the background, that's her just, Checking you know. Checking for bombs. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. So there's Dr. Viviana. Dr. Viviana. Who Pastor I, Cal. I think Dr. Viviana is supposed to be the sexologist. Let me see. Dr. Viviana Coles. Is that her? That's the first thing that comes up. No, that's someone else. Wait, Ooh. is it? Uh, oh, yes. Dr. Viviana Coles. Her Instagram um, is Dr. Viviana. Helping with emotional and physical intimacy since 03. In person slash in the media slash on TV. Married at first sight. That's her uh, Instagram bio. And you know, oh, do you want to know oh, an interesting story? Yes. So there used to be another dr viviana before on married at first sight and then she got replaced by dr viviana and then it was found out that she was dating one of the people from the show whose marriage didn't work out love finds a way right that's the reality show i want to watch i want to see what happened with them well we gotta get we have so much ground to cover because i'm I'm just thinking about so is that all your all your thoughts about the experts are that just don't like them i got more thoughts i think they use platitudes and metaphors as a way of like trying to give platitude is like um it's like saying some kind of generic thing that Mm -hmm. sounds profound that's been said a billion times but because it's said in like this pseudo tough love way, mm-hmm. it gives the impression that the experts are really laying into them when actually all they're doing is just like voicing what the audience sees in them. Yeah. And I think a lot of times they actually give pretty bad advice and they give uh, <laughs> they really don't see the situation for what it is. And yeah. uh, and they then they don't take sides to the point of like, there's so much false equivalence in the show where the judges act like every conflict, every thing, every single thing that happens Any situation is equally the guy's fault and the girl's fault. And that's not reality. And sometimes things are one person's fault. And when you sit there and you go, well, you know, I understand how you did that. But you at this, it's like you're giving the impression that any person in an argument is only 50% right. And that's just not sure. I do think, and not to defend them because I'm 100% right. (laughs) 
I do think that they are not doing great this season, but this last episode, at least Dr. Mm-hmm. Viviana with Zach in particular and Pastor Cal have been very, as much as they can without losing their professional cool, because I think they're really beholden to be professionals on camera, so they can't be like, you're a fucking idiot, you know? In, yeah. But they can in so many ways, but it seems a little um, uh, uh, surface because they can't actually say what they personally want to say. I think they have to represent totally. this idea of expert. Which is fine if you understand that, but the people right. who are watching this show who are dum-dums, who are like, <laughs> this is what, this is a real no, social experiment. No, the show is a genius yeah. and is, <laughs> has great taste and uh, we all have something in common. Um, yeah, they're, oh, Dr. Pepper is the other one, obviously. How could oh, I forget Do- Dr. The Pepper? The sociologist yeah. who acts as a counselor, which to me doesn't make any sense at all. I feel like Dr. Pepper a couple episodes ago, checked in with everyone, saw that she was neck deep in her own shit with all of them because... neck deep in pussy. You know? like, what else know. do you know? She might be. I don't know what her <laughs> preference is. But uh, I think she sat down, talked to them, realized, uh-oh, we made an uh-oh. Uh, matching some of these people and she hasn't been seen for a couple episodes I feel yeah. like she's like I'm gonna go on vacation y'all fucked up yeah. I'm gonna let you fix this yeah. <laughs> um, okay but let's get into the cast um, this season there's a lot of characters this is also the first season that they've done five couples I feel like they started with three then they added four now they added five I there's a I think two reasons in my head for this one is that there's obviously more opportunity to capture more moments and to make more dynamic episodes with more cast members. There's also a higher percentage that at least one of them will work for the experts' sake. Yes. Uh, Because I feel like they've been on a little bit of a bad track record, so they're like, let's just add more couples. There's there's more chance that one of them will actually be okay. Yes. In Vegas, they call that chasing bad money, or I think it's not. (laughs) What was that sports betting when you start... um, I think it's called chasing. It's like oh. you're losing, and so you just start dumping more and more yeah. and more. And like one of these is going to work yeah. eventually, and that's how you end up destitute. Mm-hmm. And you there's know, there's a moral there. They, I mean, people seem maybe a little morally destitute. All in right, this let's season. dive in. Okay, we'll some start couples. with the 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 slightly more boring um, Jessica and Austin. We call them kind of the dorks. They're just a little bit yes. um, more. They're just a little they're bit more pure. normal. Yeah, they're Christians or they're Catholics. They they're had close. one conversation about. How they had one very uh, candid and definitely not forced conversation about how they would raise their kids in the church or yes. not when they were on their honeymoon. Well, and they gave the they gave answers that were like. So, um, it's like we were watching that Tom Segura uh, special. Or yeah. You, list, you were doing a puzzle. I was doing a puzzle. I was and, very busy. Yeah. And I was watching it for a little bit. And he had some line in it about um, do you ever meet someone who's so boring you feel yeah. like they poisoned you? Yeah. And mm-hmm. that, was, that was how that conversation <laughs> went for me. Well, like, I don't necessarily like, I'm not going to be like really Christian about things, but like at the same time, like I am, I do believe like in God and stuff. And like I do, like I want my kids to like grow up in church and I'm like, yeah. oh, and she's like, yeah, I guess I would want mine to grow up in church too. Yeah, huh? like, uh, uh, I guess yeah I'm, I'm glad. And then it like cuts to her and she's like, I'm glad Austin said he really likes me. And I feel like that's a good thing. But it, it, and it's just like, they're so sweet. They're very and sweet. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just sort of like. I think they're actually well matched. They, they're great. I think they're just not on camera people. Especially Austin. I feel like he now is getting a little bit more comfortable being on camera. He knows the kind of sound bites he has to give in his talking yes. head interviews. So every time he's in a talking head interview, he's like, yeah, everything with Jessica's going well. We're taking it day by day. There's no, um, there's no magic date to say I love you, but you know, I'm really into her and I, I'm excited to see how this continues. And he just goes yep. boom, 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 he boom, boom. You can see his brain following the script of words in, yeah. it, in his mind. Yeah, it's a, uh, he, he he talks like I talked when I was at Source Fed, but that kind of <laughs> <laughs> just straight to the camera, like yeah, absolutely, we absolutely uh, we really like each other, and then we're not right to the love thing. I hope that comes up organically, but if it doesn't come up organically soon, that's okay because we're having <laughs> yeah. a great time, and and I, I really like her. I'm really digging her. Yeah, it seems like he's dan, 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 dan. <laughs> he's doing an impression of someone that's on reality TV, but he's doing it authentically. Uh huh. Yeah. I so their biggest problem at the moment. 
is that she has been very anxious about when they say I love you because he revealed to her that in a previous relationship, <clears throat> he that was like his good long term relationship. He didn't say I love you to like a year or two into the relationship. And that threw her for a loop. And she's been fixated on this idea of when is he going to say it? And she doesn't want to be the one that says it first. Dr. Viviana sits down with them and she ends up saying, I love you in their session with her. And he does not return I love you back to her. And it, it is was oh. wonderful. It was wonderful. <laughs> Babe, it was the highlight of my day yesterday. <laughs> just, just completely what you're expecting to have happen. And then the show just does the like, doom, 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 like oh, the, the very music. dramatic, like, <sighs> didn't work. Uh, uh, especially because Dr. Viviana is like vulnerable. Like you're wanting to be vulnerable. Yeah. Like that's great. Like vulnerability is good. And it's such a, like a message, you know, leap and you'll fly. Uh -huh. And then <laughs> she just splatters on the ground. And she says it and she, well, you can tell more and more as we get to know her. I've noticed that, oh, she has some control issues. He seems a little She's more. a little uptight. Yeah, yeah. And he seems a little more lax about everything. And she's a little more like needing to know exactly like what's happening what's going on mm -hmm. and like exactly where he's at and i think because he's got this more amorphous view of like i'll say it when i feel it like there's no time stamp for it that she's like yep. no i need to know exactly like when you are going to say it so i can schedule for myself to also say it <laughs> yeah he's got that thing that's like um that like i had a relationship in the past mm -hmm. and it was significant and therefore because of that this relationship needs to follow the the same timeline and yeah. hit the same markers at the same time and it's like that's um that's like exhausting and it's exhausting <laughs> to see on tv and play out because it's a real thing and it makes sense and it's a part of life but at the same time don't stop who cares yeah Live yeah your life they are they're interesting to me because they're clearly the first couple that fucked when they mm -hmm. started having conversations with the other couples on their honeymoon about like where they're at in their intimacy levels and she got kind of embarrassed and she's like yeah we're we you know it's all good and i was like maybe they're the most normal ones they are both equally attracted to each yep. other and they had sex and things are going well and now the show is digging for them to have a problem or an issue yeah it's also he revealed to her that his work he travels more than yeah. uh, what she initially thought. And when he told her like what the reality w might look like in the future of how much he travels, that also shocked her. And she said that she had texted him some expletives and some all caps texts. Yeah, that was painful too. There's a lot of painful stuff in there. It's a lot of painful stuff because it reminds me of m me at that mm. age and that sort of like very like you want to be like the perfect person all the time and it's very sweet but yeah. it's also just it's it's exhausting like the idea of being like i sent uh, some all caps and it's like <laughs> that's the biggest problem that you have you feel like you need to confess that yeah well i think they're a little pure i they're think pure, they're yeah. pretty normal and so they can't like spin them into these monster people that's very true and for people listening who mm -hmm. are like this sounds like a boring show we're starting at the boring yeah we're building up don't worry the spectrum is wide open pretty insane yeah okay we can move on from them unless you have any other thoughts about jessica and austin i don't nor will i ever have any more thoughts about <laughs> um okay let's move on to katie and derek derek is a dreamer and katie has um an insulin problem <laughs> all right yeah that's i mean they, they really hit hard on those two things they hit that hard derek and uh what's your name Katie. Katie, mm -hmm. I think, have the same thing that Austin and Jessica. Jessica have, where the girl is, objectively speaking, maybe a little bit more mature than the dude, yeah. but not as mature as they think they are. <laughs> yeah, I think... Um, oh, we can open that door, too. We don't need to close that, because she can come and go. Because she's over it. She's like, I hear you guys scream at the TV the whole time you watch this show, and yeah, now you're doing it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Katie thinks that she's a very wise and mature person, which she is. And they revealed that, you know, they're both 
children of divorce, but they clearly both uh, were affected in that trauma differently. Yes. Uh, She clearly, it sounds like, had some shit go down with her parents that she had to be like the peacemaker of and had to be... caretaker, yeah. Yeah, and had to like pick up all the pieces. So I think she's very much like... I uh, will fix everything and I've been I've had to fix everything so I can't be a child I have to be an adult whereas he I think is a little bit more babied and so got to not it was spared the expense of the trauma of parents getting divorced and instead just got to be a little boy and so he's still being like a little boy whose parents have probably been like you can do anything you set your mind to like dream big whereas she's had to like do her parents taxes or something yeah he drank the dream kool-aid hard yeah uh and oh but that's our favorite thing when he started listing all of his (laughs) dreams Let's Ugh. talk about his dreams. Let's talk about Let's his talk dreams. Let's talk about this person we don't know's dreams. He's got a bucket <laughs> list. Honestly, I'm a little jealous of how big of a dreamer he is. I feel a little for Katie because uh, he has very clear visions of things he at least wants to try in his life. And she's very kind of steadfast and like, I'm a professional. I got my job. I have my place of living. Yes. Like, I'm getting all the adult I'm things I'm adult. I adult. I adult. Yes. I adult. I big adult. When she's only like 26 or something. Yeah. It's the perfect age for, I think, and this is going to be a very big generalization, but it's the perfect age for a lot of girls to feel like they need to be 34 sure. or 35 when they're 26. Yeah. Um, but I think she's getting annoyed by him really quickly because seeing him be like a child reminds her that she didn't get to be a kid. Yeah. And so she's just like inherently frustrated she's, by the fact that he's so carefree. It it, it eats her alive and <laughs> will destroy their relationship, yeah. Grace. It will be the thing that takes them down. Oh, the previews for the next episode, they get clearly drunk and angry. She yes. gets well, furious. Well, she is an angry drunk and she has been throughout the entire series. Oh, see, I haven't noticed that as much. I think she just... I know it's, it's, it's there. Anytime she's she has a wine in her yeah, that night that night will end poorly for her, both but of I them. feel like they have pretty good makeup sex probably it seems like she gets a little like sexual and also a little like mm-hmm. finger waggy yeah. at him uh, when that happens but she's emotionally abusive but yeah <laughs> well, okay wow um, I mean she basically goes from zero to 60 yeah immediately and it's always about base and she said it at one point she was like yeah it's jealousy i know or she goes i don't know if it's jealousy and the moment somebody starts a sentence with i don't know if it's i'm like that's what it is whatever you just said <laughs> and it's definitely jealousy for it like she got so upset about like his childhood crap in his garage yeah and the fact that he i guess went on like an amazing date with some girl at like a frat party or something when he was in college and i think I think she probably feels like she missed out on a lot of things. And so to see the fact that he got to do a lot of carefree things just like pisses her off. Yeah. I I think she's got a lot of anger towards her parents. A lot of that and a lot of uh, misplaced anger when it comes to it. It's open, lady. Oh, it's a dog. that She's coming and going. She's Um, in and out. Yeah. uh, He's got life experiences, but I think that makes her more upset because... She, she basically, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> go lay down. Just go lay down. You're fine. You have thoughts on Derek? <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hi. Um, it's, she, he's got more life experiences that she doesn't have and yet still has like an innocence. And I think yeah. that probably is very frustrating because she's like, how is it that I don't have any of these experiences and my heart, my spirit is dead. <laughs> yeah. I think also she okay, cool. um, probably feels like she has to now take care of him the way she took care of her parents. And there's like a resentment in that. Yeah. Uh, but but I they're do, fine. They're fine. Technically, they're fine. But I think she's going to self-sabotage to a point where they're not going to be fine. Yes. I Her truth speaks. But I do love that she got so pissed off that he talks about taking shits all the time openly. I love that. And it is like he is like a little boy. He's like a teenage boy still in a lot of his oh, actions. Yeah. And that just like rubs her the wrong way. Also, she his came, cadence too. We yeah. Can, I mean, when he talks into his nose and he's like, I don't know why you can't support my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing that he does. I have dreams. You don't have dreams. I'm like, funny. You don't have dreams. I have dreams. You yeah. dreams. And I, I know, want you. I know but I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do those things. By the way, one of his dreams is writing a Christmas song. <laughs> he says 
Teddy wants to. I know. I know it sounds weird. I know, but I'm going to do it. And you know, I'm okay, going buddy. to pay on iTunes whatever price it is for his goddamn Christmas song when I'm it comes pre- out. I'll pre-order it. I'll order it on vinyl. But also, we have to say and talk a little bit about the fact that she came into this experience with a lingering ex that I guess when found out that she was on the show and got chosen for it, decided to like show back up in her life and be like, hey, I know I said I didn't like you like that, but actually I kind of like you like that, which is I feel like she's been strung along in situations and now uh, she's just like angry at the way that things are working out for her. I think it's I think it's the grass is greener syndrome. Mm-hmm. She got like the thing that walked away or wouldn't give her what she wanted. Right. And now that thing is the forbidden fruit because yeah. it's coming back on like remember me I've solved the, the one thing you didn't like which right. is that I you know wasn't totally committed and now any weird thing that this dude does that's more boyish mm-hmm. is going to be uh, more um, yeah I think that she yeah I agree I think she's got an infatuation with like the bad boy type a guy that's clearly yes. like wrong for her and so this guy is the opposite of that so of course she's probably like fantasizing about like I wish he was more of a bad boy I wish he was like you know would just like throw me on the bed yeah. and like shit like that this is where it gets very very Freudian and very like unconscious because the idea is that your unconscious desires uh, will manifest eventually, but they're mm-hmm. often opposite to what your conscious desires are. So I could see her while signing up for this show, listing all the qualities that Derek yeah. has, but on an unconscious level, what she really wants is none of those things. Oh, and she actually hates yeah. those things. Exactly. <laughs> That's where you're like, you can't fault the experts in that sense when they're like, you gave us, we did an interview with you, multiple yep. interviews and on paper, we gave you exactly what you said to us you wanted. Yep. And we can't help that you lied to us. Yep. They have the receipts. And then she w- she'll she go, I didn't lie because it's unconscious and she doesn't yeah, know. Yeah. She's not, she'd be so confused and frustrated not knowing that really what she wants is uh, something so much worse than Derek. Oh, yeah. Wow. So what anyway, fun. thanks. Everybody. Oh, moving on. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk now about, we're getting into the good ones. Now we're getting into the good ones. Uh, let's talk about, do you want to do Taylor and Brandon or Mika and Michael? Because uh, you know I'm saving Mindy and Zach for last. Of course. Let's do, um, let's do Mika. Mika and Michael. Mika is a ventriloquist doll. Who is, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's lost her, her puppeteer. Elliot and, called out last <laughs> night the way Mika talks in her talking at interviews. And I want to caveat that I respect all the people that are on this show and putting yourself in this situation. I can't even imagine what it's like. So none of this is like talking direct shit about them in any way, because uh, kudos to them for uh, trying this experience. But yeah, Mika has an intensity to her in her talking at interviews and the way her eyes don't really shift and her head doesn't move. (laughs) Ellie was like, that's a ventriloquist doll. And well, I was even like, just oh. the way her mouth moves is very just yeah. uh, vertical. Like her mouth. Yes. Is, and it when her like, head moves, her whole body like moves with it. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's very interesting. But we've been saying this whole season that Mika seems, again, a little bit like um, Derek in a way that it's like a, a young girl saying things that she thinks like adults say. Yes. That it's like. I want this and I don't have this and this is what I wanted. And I like even on the wedding day when she came out in her dress and she just kind of pouted because she's like, the dress doesn't fit. She's a powder. Yeah, she's still pout- <laughs> she's still in the pouty stage. What do you call it? The yum yum phase? The yummy that. phase. Yummy phase. Yeah, when um, you're kind of like still stuck in like your childhood self. Yeah, and you can tell kind of um, and this this is I think what connects them with the, uh, the previous two couples mm-hmm. is the couples that are mostly defined by values that you can tell they kind of inherited and adopted without yeah. personal life experience. So, you know, I'm going to say I love you after this and I'm going to you know he shouldn't have dreams and it's like uh, with Mika it's like he needs he's, he needs to give a budget he needs to do this you need to be on time you need to blah 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 and it's like it doesn't seem like she genuinely believes these things it mm-hmm. seems like it's a program that was downloaded into her mm. head and she just sort of re- it to me anyway yeah I can totally what do you see- think Chris? no I can totally see that because Michael the biggest issue they're having is that Michael uh, seems to be lying 
to her again and again and again, and that's a big trigger for her. Let's talk Be- about Michael. Yeah, he's Michael is an interesting character. I couldn't, and I still don't fully know if I have a read on him because when she was getting upset with like the small, seemingly like harmless white lies that were happening throughout the season, like he said that he. Um, was a yoga instructor and I guess off camera like invited her to his yoga studio to take a class and when she searched for him there they said we know Michael he's a guy that cleans the rooms sometimes but we have no teacher here named Michael yes. that that just shocked her system and blew her reality out of the water because yes uh, oh they but the big thing that started all of this unraveling was on the honeymoon off camera again he inferred something to her on the plane that was like if we don't have sex on the honeymoon i can't see myself moving forward with this marriage yeah and that just rubbed her the wrong way and then he would never admit on camera that he actually said that to her which is i believe her because that's a crazy thing for her to come up with out of nowhere to tell on camera about Mm -hmm. him uh, the interesting, for it to not be true. The interesting thing, though, is like that's a very honest thing to tell somebody. Like yeah. for a guy who's being pegged a liar, that's the that's very raw and not likable. No, but you can't fault him for being like. But I think that it, the main issue was that, yeah, I'm with you that that is a very intimate conversation to have and a very warranted conversation to discuss like expectations of intimacy on a honeymoon Mm -hmm. when you're thrust into this situation and it's like now the journey has started and we're stuck together for the next eight weeks so let's start talking about it i think it wasn't talked about correctly and i think had he just immediately owned up to the fact that like yeah shit i'm sorry i said it completely like um, in a terrible, degrading sounding way. I didn't mean that. I really just wanted to talk mm-hmm. to you about like our expectations of sex and blah, blah, blah. Boom, but problem solved. Problem solved, or at least the start of solving the at problem can happen. At least it's a happen. discussion happening. Yeah, instead he just sort of like stared into the abyss and kind of denied, or oh, definitely denied yeah, he- saying any of that. And that just dug the hole deeper for her, for someone that clearly has trust issues yes she's and she's also so they're a horrible match they um (laughs) he he is his defense mechanism is embellishment and doubling down yeah which is a terrible thing to do when you're caught in a lie yeah uh but because of his past or so he says uh he's more inclined to to skirt the truth a little bit Mm -hmm. um he reminds me like uh when i was in college i took a class in um uh uh, alleg- like crocodile stuff and it was like a, we went Cro- to a crocodile what? an alligator crocodile oh, farm zoology you studied yeah. yes okay. and uh, we had a whole day where like we were, we were taught basically how to how to grab and with and um, restrain crocodiles this is so and Florida so, it's so Florida and so you know I remember I would walk people through it afterward and talk mm-hmm. about it and be like well you know you grab their tail and against what you would expect you actually shake their tail a little bit to make sure that they're like aware of you yeah and then you stay along the axis of the body that way they can't like because their tail is really what'll uh-huh. get you in addition so you stay away from the tail and the mouth uh, by staying along their back and you jump on them and you kind of work your hands up their jaw uh-huh. to keep their mouth shut which is really easy to do because as much as strength as they have going down they don't have as much coming back and i used to spit that out that information out right like i was an actual alligator handler <laughs> for a while yeah you saying it just now uh, makes right. me go what was your past yeah that's it and it's <laughs> did you all work true. for joe exotic at some yeah, point but, well, oh man i wish uh it, i've met many of joe exotic okay <laughs> and many of them are probably there that that uh whatever it was but anyway I can say all that stuff and it sounds like I'm an actual right. alligator handler and I could pass myself off as one. Yeah. But if you were to actually ask me to do it in the wild, I would never in a million years yeah. do that. And it's like, if you were Mika and mm-hmm. I told you all that stuff, you would be like, you're a liar. You're not an animal. Right, uh, right And I would right. be like, oh no, I, like, I kind of, it's embellishment versus well, and straight up lying. But this episode, there was eventually a moment of clarity for her when she sat down with his sister. And also when he admitted in their meeting with Dr. Viviana that from growing up in, um, as an adopted child, he 
didn't fit in anywhere and was made fun of and bullied when he was younger so he would embellish his life story so people would like him which is easy to see as an audience member which i guess is why i couldn't Mm -hmm. understand why mika was getting so triggered because i'm like oh he clearly like as a child lied about things and no one called him and he didn't take accountability so it's I just used to do I think I remember being a kid and like yeah. making up stuff to make my day sound more interesting everyone's done that but then as an adult when you're called out on it but yeah. you continue to do yep. it that's when it starts to be that's when I understand why Mika's being driven crazy by oh, this it's good TV Grace it's oh, also so- yeah she gets so mad they sit on their bed and they like pull out their finances to have a very real talk about where they're at financially after there's already been some um chaos about what his job actually is because he got like a job promotion when they started the show but then Uh it fell through and so how much is he actually making this Uh is like one of the things that couples need to talk about to you know forge the more intimate conversations and he basically like gives this roundabout answer of like what he (laughs) might be making well hold on though before he he does that uh she sets him up to be destroyed <laughs> by initiating the conversation and going, so anyway, here's here's my pay stubs. And like- Pulls out her laptop and shows And shows him. pay stubs, right. which in and of itself is like a, you better give me proof. It's like basically going, see how I'm giving you proof of my yeah. salary? You need to give me proof, which well, is inherently like, it, it's, it's, pre, it's, it's pre-assuming that he's gonna be dishonest. I don't I don't fully buy that because she's so quickly when he tries to explain to her after taxes or whatever what he could be making and she's like I majored in math this doesn't add up for me just give me exactly like what are you claiming yeah. on your tax form just give me these simple direct answers and then she loses it and yes. she calls out the producer Monty. She's like, I can't have a conversation with the Monty. So I think they knew exactly what they were supposed to do in that scene. They're supposed to sit and show each other mm-hmm. exactly their finances. And she's like, here, this is the most clear way to show you here are my pay stubs. Yes. And so I don't think she Definitely. set him up for failure. I think they were both mm. knowing that they were supposed to in this scene sit down and share their finances and he... So you don't think it could have just been like, I think he I made, made it this- harder for himself. I think instead of admitting that he's not making as much money as he might have told her before or told uh, the cameras before he doesn't want to he's embarrassed which he admitted to later Mm -hmm. so he way 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 later way later so he creates he digs himself into these holes he creates this weird vague thing presentation to her of what he could be getting paid that doesn't disclose that he's actually you know not getting the amount of money that he said before and so if you're already Mika and you're triggered over and over again by the same shit and you're like, he's doing it again. I'm not going to have a conversation. He's do like, this is the l- all I wanted to do. Finances are pretty cl- cut and dry. Like I just wanted, we're supposed to just sit here and say how much we make. Well, he screwed up the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but you could see it coming with the pay stubs because yeah. it could have been a conversation. I think Mika is... All of that dude's weirdness is just so strange. Yeah, that's it's why very I don't have a full read valley. on him. Yeah. yeah, I can't get it. Um, he's like got a way to articulate himself that's very immature, but mm-hmm. then he sort of talks. He like bulldozes conversations yeah. with like our quote unquote articulate. Stuff. But she's like reflexively argumentative to the point that she will go off at the drop of a hat and I don't think you can do that with somebody like him who is so terrified of not being yeah. accepted for yeah for I don't think they have constructive conversations however I'm curious to see now if they start because he's admitted like I feel like it's been this slow like pulling his mm-hmm. reality out of him like pulling his truth out of him uh, because in all the sessions he's cried on camera about his you know, being adopted in his his childhood and stuff like so I think he just has a lot of work that he's never done about his anger with his childhood. Like, like everyone he on said this some show. some weird stuff last night. Yeah, he was saying some stuff. I was like, well, what? he clearly has some shit that he hasn't Very dealt legit. with. Yeah, yeah. No. and I don't think he's a bad dude. No, I don't no. think he's a chronic liar. None I think of these he's, people are. That's why this show is fascinating. Well, he might be a chronic liar, but not in a way that's not justified by his back. I don't think it's malicious. I think he can't help it. I think it's part of his character now, part of his, like, 
how he's developed. It's yeah. like part of his development. He's learned that this is how he copes and his defense but mechanisms. part of Mika's development is that she can't process that. No. <laughs> That's but beyond she might, her. I mean, she seemed to be very optimistic after having the conversation with the sister that like she gets it now and she can understand and have some sympathy for uh-huh. him. But I'm curious to see if that actually happens or if it's just like too late. I it, think she's, I think it's beyond. I think it's. If it's, I were them, I'd be like, okay, I understand you, but I still don't think this is going to work for either of us. To bring it back to the scene they had, uh, her getting that might be um, above her pay grade, I think, at this point. It might be a little (laughs) bit more than she wants to deal with. Well, I do love, I love the scene of her just storming out of the hallway and talking to Monte and being like, I want to fucking deal with that. Do you guys want to lie or do you want to lie? You can fucking have him. That was amazing. She was like, like, this is a cool Mika. I like this. This is real. You can tell, like, this is what I want to see. This is what I hope happens on the show more where we get more of those candid moments Mm -hmm. and not the, like, scripted, like, he lied to me again, and I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that scene was uh, the episode Wonderful. was such as the, the show is a surreal thing to watch because you can see the most like kind of authentic moment, and it, it kind of does capture something. Yeah. But then they'll just punctuate it with like back to the normies, where you're like so bored out of your mind. <laughs> So it's a exhaust. It's like a cardio exercise to and, watch this thing. Yeah, the bummer with this show is that they identify the underlying major problem in each couple, and then they just repeat scenes of them talking yeah. about the same problem over and over in different environments and in different ways. Yep. Um, so it it really, if you don't know what the issues are. With these couples, you're a goddamn idiot because yeah. they shove it down your throat yeah. every episode. Mika and uh, they're 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 good. They're goods though. They're all they're both goods. They're all, I just don't think they're a good match. They're all well intentioned people. I yeah, well, I agree with you that I think they're both good so people, far. but they I don't think that they're meant to be. Yes. Um, okay, Taylor and Brandon. Have you have we listed a couple that we do think would be good? I mean, Jessica and Austin, the dorks, I think are gonna like are a well matched couple. Yeah, I think in the we'll wild, go into our predictions. Like, yeah, that. in the wild, I think they would actually find each other. Um, Taylor and Brandon, wow, wig, 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 wig. <sighs> Taylor got a new wig. That's what this episode is called for me. Taylor wig, Taylor wig. <laughs> Taylor new got wig. a new wig. Taylor's looking like a real housewife of Atlanta <laughs> when she showed up. I was like, did Portia just show up? I know you don't know that reference, but uh, no. trust me, uh, she, I might though. Maybe you'll show me some I real know. housewife oh. stuff sometime. And Maybe dive into if you're so lucky. Yeah. Uh, okay, this couple is. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to really feel about the sincerity of this relationship at all. Basically, it's all so weird. It's all very strange. Uh, Brandon is like supposedly an introvert that deals with anxiety, but he, he talks very cool and whatever. Taylor's like beauty and brains, they keep calling her, that she like works in a research lab, but she also works for like a liquor company. Um, she's like a party girl. <laughs> like she yeah. is. And they really didn't spell that out. We're learning that slowly. And they're even, I think, being very conservative about presenting her as a party girl. She, they, her boob fa- fell out. <laughs> yeah, she had a full tit out that was blurred on camera that I just telling Hannah about the other day and she was like I didn't even see it when she came back to her place oh. after a night of partying where she posted an Instagram story saying yeah. she was single looking for a decent man with oh. a so they had eggplant a plant emoji oh, they had a big fight on their honeymoon where he basically lost his cool about the filming side of things didn't want to be on camera like cursed everyone off on their way to the airport, like cursed Taylor off in front of the other cast, all of it, like had a full actual meltdown, which is to be expected. And I'm shocked hasn't happened on previous seasons, unless I'm forgetting. But um, so they clearly had some issues. Then they get back to D.C. and they're trying to work things out and it's not working out. They're on different pages. He also starts getting fed up with her because she's like an influencer. She's got a bunch of followers on her Instagram. So 11.2 thousand at the time of. Yes, I've done some research. This is a this is a real podcast about mm-hmm. Married at First Sight. <laughs> uh, and so she's always on her phone and he gets this like bad feeling that she just wants to be on TV. And he says that she's even said to him like she was supposed to do like Love Island, but she couldn't make the dates work. So she did. they went into it. Yeah, they oh, went into the I whole process. I loved hearing that. That gave me so much context. I was like, this makes so much more sense. She clearly because 
even on camera she'd be like ha ha and like posing almost oh yeah and it's like all very staged it's like very someone, performing yeah like someone that's watched reality tv that has their opportunity to be a reality tv star and can already like smell the fit tea like yep. branded yes. instagram posts that she's gonna be doing in the future and so she makes some random video that's very weird and looks doctored up about her going like i i have pretty low standards and i can't find a fucking man i guess i'll just be single forever and it's like text on it that says like not a felon must be over six foot five like um fine as hell and like uh something about a dick it like it looks very strange it doesn't look real it's all doctored up and then he got mad that obviously that she posted that she's single there's a there's a theme i think that we should hit or or an underlying a disclaimer maybe that um we i don't think it's super interesting to go into which elements of um this show are super produced yeah but that definitely seemed like super produced (laughs) because it's the video that they keep showing has all different types of text on it i'm like what even on you just know it doesn't look real like if you put on your instagram story you that's not what it would look like if you put on snapchat i haven't used that forever maybe that's what it would look like i don't even know she said that she posted it to like her friend's private facebook group or something but she's not talking to anyone specifically she's talking to a broad audience so none of it makes any sense at all but then he moves out and she gets home this is my favorite scene in the whole series this whole season she comes home in the morning her and her boob come home yeah her and her rogue boob come home <laughs> in the morning with her heels off her dog's like waiting for her she clearly just got home that morning she's clearly still drunk from the night so before drunk. and they have her wandering around the apartment noticing that he's packed up and left and like yeah her tits fully out it's blurred and she's just kind of like sitting on the bed glassy eyed and i'm like this is amazing and she's refusing with such confidence to think that the idea of posting a video like that would it all be offensive to your Ugh. reality husband no yeah she, which is just like one of those things where you're like watching somebody and you're like how are you saying that with a straight face and they the professionals still trying to like maintain their professionalism are trying to get her to realize like how that would seem to someone and she just doesn't take ownership yeah, of it just, at I all i did it i didn't think about it i was just yeah but then there's this weird like they make them reconcile and it's all such bullshit to me because clearly she still wants to be on the show and doesn't want oh. her storyline to end and they clearly don't know how to keep going if they quit so they make them have to like deal with each other My, uh, yeah i like watching these these series a lot because watching this the decay mentally that people undergo <laughs> is super interesting and brandon reaching a point where he just didn't give a shit enough oh. to be like nah man she said she was going to be on this show she couldn't get on this sh- that show so she's going to be on this one she said this she uh what was it um uh Oh, uh, she said she wasn't really sorry. She was going to say it for camera. She said that, like, this is just to get followers. She's taking foot. Like, all that's, yeah. like, laying into all the stuff it. that you suspect. And yeah. then he just articulates it. And she's just, like, <laughs> and trying to be, like, all-American girl. Yeah. Like, no. Trying to be so likable. She realizes that her narrative could be edited to look like a bitch. So she tries to backtrack to be, like, but I'm I, I'm interested in, like, making this work out. And he's, like, I knew you'd say that. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then he, like, gets oh, up God. and leaves. Oh, Oh, it's so good that he that's what made me like Brandon. I'm like, oh, he really hates that. She seems to be a little bit of a social climber reality TV person. And he's just calling it out being like, I'm not going to play this game with you. I'm not going to let you look good on camera because I know that's what you want. Oh, man. Uh, And so they, though, in the most recent episode are like hunky dory right now. They've talked through their problems. I think they're both horny and they they're both horny (laughs) and they're both like we have two weeks. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's all fake on their end, but they've done a great job of passing the ball of unlikability back uh-huh. and forth. Yeah, and because he started out, and you're like, this dude's a monster. I was like, oh, I feel terrible for her. She should never have to stay with a guy that can that easily flip a switch. Yes, and like, oh yeah, it's terrible. That, yeah. that kind of that's beyond. Like he lost his mind because she was recording him sleeping. Right, which I can understand being like, don't do, don't do that. Yeah. But at the same time, he went took it to too a whole far thing. When you wake me up filming me it's just like i call it's just a routine we don't talk for days 
days. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they're now both weirdly together, but yeah, you're right. They're just horny and they're they're, they're writing just it off. Horny and like he knows that he's over halfway through it, and so. I feel like off camera, they've probably both made some sort of deal. Yeah. That's my conspiracy theory that they're like, all right, we're done. We're not going to work out, but let's just get through the next two weeks mm-hmm. and then we'll just agree to move on. Like yep. that to me is the best way to do this whole thing. Have a real conversation to be like, I don't think this is going to work, but for the sake of like our reputations yep. and um, our agreement, like legal, yep. ha- legally having to f- finish this let's just make the best of it yep. on camera when we can but it's weird to watch it's weird to watch and very just like i don't believe you yeah yeah i'm like oh they've made a plea deal yes <laughs> <laughs> um okay last but not <laughs> least <laughs> mindy and zach oh this what treasures goddamn saga god bless mindy 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 the most real person on oh, the show god she truly is a champion mindy uh, has her own values mindy has her own standards she has her own insecurities she's very honest about she's very transparent mm-hmm. she's very forthright she's loyal uh, and she's good loyal, as far as good. we know Who she's knows? athletic she's yeah. tall she's, she's pretty she's got everything she's a catch and then there's fucking zach now tell us about zach grace zach i think i mean i don't know we only know what we're shown and it's only like a small percentage of what these people are but zach might be like a narcissist like you've said it that he's the definition seeming of narcissist like i don't thank you i don't (laughs) thank you for saying that because most people will say sociopath and i think that it's a catch-all for people who are mean. Yeah, but I don't want to say sociopath. this dude is not that mean. No, I... He's, he's terrifyingly narcissistic. I think he thinks he's trying to do his best, which I think he is doing his best. I think this is what he... I think he got into this show. He's a model. He's a fitness whatever. And he clearly saw an advantage in being on the show that could help his career in some way, but he'll never admit that because that's narcissistic to admit. And that's not what he thinks he is. And I think he clearly wasn't attracted to Mindy, which who cares? Sometimes on these things, you're not going to be attracted to people and you can call a spade a spade. And that's, I think the harder, but more mature thing to do. Yeah. Also, and he just wouldn't do that. Let me, let's give, I'm gonna give a little pretext. Okay. First episode rolls around. Yeah. We're meeting all the cups. Mm hmm. Cuts to Zach. Yeah. Most gorgeous person that's ever been on the show. Male or female, you could hear, hands down. You could hear a collective... It was a flood. ...double take, <laughs> the whoosh of a double take from every audience member that's watching this show at the same time going, huh? It they was, got that guy on the show? It was like impressive for the... It was like the show <laughs> was bragging. Yeah, the show, exactly. The show was like, we can get hot t- guys too, Chris Harrison. We're not Go all sixes. Yourself. We're not all sixes. <laughs> yeah. Most of them are sixes. Uh, and that's why it's real... Reality TV. So this dude, looks wise, is is just ridiculous model. Like yeah. he's just like he what looks you like would the imagine. definition of model. Great looking guy, Mindy, very pretty. Not the same kind of like out of a catalog pretty. Right. And so there's a mismatch there a little bit, but not enough that it should have been a detriment to the no. thing in any way. He he, Grace, <laughs> listen to me. You're starting to talk like Derek. He. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, listen, no, just because I have a dream, you have a dream, just because I have a dream, I'll get it, I, do, I know what to do, I'm going to accomplish these things. Um, he, I think Zach, there is something about him, okay, first of all. Yeah, so many thoughts. So many thoughts right yeah, now. Yeah, go for I'm it. I'm like Derek and the Christmas song. Yeah. Uh, I, want, I want you to tell people about my prediction with Zach and how early I was. Okay, from the very first episode, you, I don't know exactly what you said, but it was something along the lines that, like, this guy is going to be a narcissist and he's not going to, like, even try on this show. Yeah, I think I said psycho or something yeah. like that. <laughs> like, he, he was acting like a... Um, like how AI would write a perfect guy kind of deal. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. every response was very suave and cool, but it, there was like nothing going on behind his eyes. And I really truly think Zach might be a legitimately 
evil person. Oh, <laughs> like I and I, I hate to say that because wow. that's a big thing. That's a they might very listen mean, to this. Well, don't I don't mean it in an evil way. I just mean like it creeped me out from the very beginning how he behaves. Yeah, and that level well, it just was so <clears throat> unnatural. So unnatural. And then watching last night's episode <clears throat> is <clears throat> him. Excuse me, him mm-hmm. going. I treated her right. Mm-hmm. I never lied. And all that stuff. And when you're dealing with that kind of, uh, like, blatant dishonesty, mm-hmm. there's something about it that does creep me. That makes me well, like, like what, is, what is happening well, in the that's brain? What I respected so much last night about Dr. Viviana is she's biting her tongue. Like, literally, it looked like she was chomping her teeth down on her tongue mm-hmm. while talking to him to be like, you really honestly believe that you were treating her the best which is a producer way of going you might want to say something else here <laughs> right and you might want to add a but, but. That's every single expert that sat down pastor cow's spent episode sitting down with him being like you want to continue this marriage and he'd be like yeah yeah fiddles with the ring on finger yeah yeah i do and he's like do you really want to continue this marriage? Mm -hmm. Like they can't tell them no. They have to get them to admit no. Yep. And he's just been a maniac the whole, the whole time. I also love that from the very beginning, they caught immediately because you can't not catch that. He just talks in these amorphous threads that you're, he starts with the solid idea and then he just continues talking. He summarizes too. He does a thing where it's like, he'll, you'll be, he'll be asked a question about what Mm -hmm. happened and he'll go, he'll just explain it like in bullet points, but not give any personal opinion. Well, because he's not listening. Not give any kind of emotion. He's not, he's only listening to 50% of what's said to him. I think he catches, I think he's in his own head about so many different things and he'll catch little nuggets of conversation that are presented to him and he'll repeat them back as if to show that he's been listening and paying attention to everything that Mindy and the experts have been saying to him. Uh, And I think he feels like he's breaking the mold of hot guy stereotype. So he tries to sound very intelligent and he tries to talk in these like uh, long winded diatribes that he thinks are these amazingly profound sermons. And they're just gibberish yeah. at some point. I And I want to backtrack and not I, I don't think evil is the right word, but definitely creepiness. There's a creepiness to that level of illegitimacy that I I, I can't shake. And yeah, it's great I think, TV. Yeah, I because I was curious about like his sexuality even going into yes. this because it seemed he seemed so in his head and so removed from creating any intimacy with, with even the experts, with even the other couples. Like there seems to be this incredibly strong wall put up of him mm-hmm. really concerned with how he seems on camera. And I think I do give him some slack because I think he I may I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt that maybe he realizes that he's cast as the quote hot guy and that's troublesome to like handle and that maybe he's dug his own grave because he's trying to get himself out of that being his role on the show or his I don't you, know I don't know that's me reaching to you're, try and you're be, being real nice yeah I, I think anyway he they get into a conversation he's been talking to her friends that are like over Instagram or something and I found like a quote secret about Mindy that he didn't want to reveal on camera but instead made himself look like a weirdo in the way he was presenting it like why would you present something that is combative and that is a character defamation in a way to someone but only present the vague intro of it he's a level of stupid that i can't con- <laughs> comprehend it makes I, whatever Ugh. he is the, because here's the thing that this this motivation that he has to look good on camera mm-hmm. i don't buy it all because he doesn't look good on camera at all i know like, what's, i think what's he's her name? Pa- the, um, mindy no the instagram Vivi- model oh taylor taylor yeah. she her motivation is to look good on camera and she does a pretty good job of at yeah. least most of the time looking good on camera everything he does makes him look like a monster. (laughs) And I think he's spiraling because he doesn't know how to control. I think he fully underestimated what this situation would be. And now he's just in his own paralysis of not knowing how to handle 
what he really wants in this situation, yeah. which is he wants it to be over, but he doesn't want to end it because it, that might be look bad for him. So he's sticking with it when really he's ruining everyone around him's time by thinking that he's doing them a favor by staying with it when it's like, you're not staying with it. You didn't move in with her, which here's my conspiracy theory about why he didn't move in with her. I think because he's a fitness professional, this weird, vague job, which I can't judge because I also have a weird, vague job. Uh, I think he doesn't actually have a lot of work. And so he doesn't want to move in with her because she w- wakes up, goes to the ice skating rink, teaches kids every day. She's very obviously honest about this is what I do for a living. I think he sits around and works out and walks his dogs. And that's like his day in and day out. And that he doesn't want to be seen as like he doesn't have anything to do. Yeah, I would believe that if any of his other actions in any way made him look good like that would be the only time that he he did something because he was afraid of looking bad like if he wanted to to look like it's way worse to be uh, in terms of how it looks it's way worse to be the guy who who doesn't yeah have a job and or doesn't move in than it is to be the guy who doesn't doesn't move in and doesn't have a job i think he just doesn't know how to conduct himself and he i think it's not human baby it's not that man is not human (laughs) That man is from Westworld. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of that. But Mindy, Mindy, to her credit and maybe to her detriment, tried to stick it out for way too long, even though she she's an hand- angel. She's a she sweet angel. handled herself with such elegance, with such grace, with such, such tact, tact. Oh. in every conversation that she had with him that she comes out on top 10 out of 10 times. To the point that we were rooting for her so hard yeah. halfway through the season that we were like, don't get too mean, Mindy. Like, yeah, don't, ride this out. Yeah, You're going to look like a, a saint. I know, <laughs> because it's so easy. And I know I would get so infuriated by him that I would say things that I would regret saying and then in turn ruin my reputation on the show. And she hasn't done that. And I'm like so inspired yep. and awed by her ability to handle herself she's so maturely. She's yeah. a real human. And she's going to come with out. the least human person. She's going to come out on top. Like after this show ends, I feel like she's going to it's going to be wonderful for her. Um, But she finally called off their marriage. And I feel like there's just a collective exhale from all the producers and the uh, experts that are like, God, thank God we needed you to do that because we couldn't legally get you out of this situation. And we really fucked up by putting you in this. And it it also reeks of like, we need a little more footage. But the moment we have all the footage we need, you you can go. You can end it. Also, I feel like they should give her a big ass paycheck for sticking this out and like creating their season for them. She should get all the tea deals possible. (laughs) Um, you know the show going back to like how it makes me very thankful for our relationship one of the things that i do really like about the way we communicate Mm -hmm. is we tend to as the saying goes let our yeses be yeses and our noes be noes and zach i don't think has ever heard that phrase let alone internalized it and so it leads to like burying answers in words and words and words and you're just like there. I don't want to say it's a character flaw or but it's mm-hmm. definitely a very immature way to communicate when you can't just be like yes. Yeah, and he's nope. clearly had no one in his life call him out on that before. Like I feel like all of his friends that we've seen on the show have been like that's just Zach. Yep. That's just how he is. So no one's called him on it and then suddenly he's confronted with all these people being like what are you saying? Yeah. I don't even care to try and ask you to clarify that i'm honestly so tired by it that i don't even care (laughs) yeah and then there's so many moments in the like with the conversations that mindy has with them which are are associated it's an interesting exercise in seeing like a Mm one-sided conversation where one person knows like how Mm -hmm. to communicate and the other person doesn't but he would she'd give him so many opportunities to give a level of honesty that could be unlikable but could also be redeeming in the fact that it's just simply honest like Mm -hmm. when she would question him about his motivations about being gay about being um uh like seeing other people seeing other people he had every opportunity to go like yeah you know i'm i'm used to dating this type of person or yeah i do care about personal appearance like i do care like i I, like i think he sees that as wrong exactly and so he does he won't just admit it because of dumb okay (laughs) (laughs) you went you backtrack on calling him evil because you felt bad about it and now you're just doubling down on my limits (laughs) 
Um, but I'm proud of her for moving on. He like and uh, he clearly like had been talking to her friends. And I guess the big secret is that he heard through a grapevine that her ex wanted to like pick her up from the airport when they got back from their honeymoon but he had never i know i know that was such a weird it's such a weird thing but he had been talking with her friend and then her friend was weird Lindsay. she was like uh, my character flaws that i delete text messages after they're sent to me uh-huh. <laughs> and that so i don't have the text to show you mindy L- Lindsay, the it's... friend that was never in any of the friend groups that never. when mindy was hanging out with them except was at the wedding and they did just happen to get a completely standalone yeah. shot of her that's why you've heard my <laughs> conspiracy theory I is that up. my conspiracy theory is that Lindsay worked on the show in some capacity in the past and that's why she was able to get Mindy on the show and that's why she might have reached out to Zach to tell him something that could create a narrative on the show uh-huh. and help it out but it blew up in her face and that's why it got messy and panned out the way it did that's just my theory or Zach theory. knew that Lindsay had worked on the show and reached out to her because he realized that he mm-hmm. was pa- paired with a woman that is so much smarter and emotionally more intelligent than him and is calling him out on his character flaws so he needed some kind of dirt on her so that he didn't look like the bad one in the relationship I get why we enjoy this show yeah this There's... is also in like we're talking like crazy people right now <laughs> <laughs> we're, give, we're judging in a way these people on this show but let be known that we have a self-awareness of how insane and dumb we sound while doing this. Oh, and I'm sure there's so much about that that would explain Zach's behavior. At least I can only hope. But it's also fun to take it at face value. And if you do... Uh, it's such an extreme he's the most fascinating I think reality character I've ever come across and Mm. so I I appreciate him um, and I appreciate what he did for the show because it is interesting to see people react the way that he's reacting yeah also when I go on Twitter occasionally after we watch episodes and I look at just like Mm. what the general consensus is uh, everyone just can't stand Zach, but I think he's going to get a billion girls sliding into his DMs anyway. Mm-hmm. The other thing I think yeah, about the, too is the, that the sh- low hanging fruit of people yeah. who just don't give a crap. Also, the um, the show itself is so PG and so conservative and so whatever that I can't imagine how he would be edited on any other reality show that really just wanted to trash him. Yeah. <laughs> so he picked the best reality show to go on, actually, because I feel like he would get fully dragged if he was on The Bachelor mm-hmm. or if he was on any of these other shows. I liked in last night's, uh, the most recent episode where he, uh, you call, you noticed it first that he mm. was pretty drunk. Oh, Which yeah, is... he's clearly, when she's about to break it off with him, he comes back from walking his dog, and he just seems like three sheets to the wind. <laughs> yeah, and it also is like he was, I think he says later that he was coming home for the, for, for the day, or coming to her place for the yeah. day to stay the night, and I, I think it's a very telling thing if you're showing up to the uh, already drunk to go to bed, oh, yeah. basically, and totally. like, say some nice things in front of the camera. And, uh, yeah. yeah, there's. But the funny thing is too that like off camera when they had the conversation where he admitted that it was about her ex, whatever. Mm-hmm. They, it was they have footage of it like on a GoPro in the corner of there, so they still document them when the cameras aren't there. Uh, yeah, that was fun. And too. I feel like he didn't realize that, and so he's probably like, oh shit, like uh, he made such a point to not say it directly on camera. Uh-huh. And it's it's like we still got you. Yep, got you. <laughs> got you. Wow, we've been talking for a very long time about this. Really? How long? And over an hour. Well, let's wrap it up. Let's babe. wrap it up. The first episode's always going to be longer, I think, because we have so many thoughts collectively from the season as a whole. Would you say we piled it on? Oh, uh, we piled it on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how we end it? Yeah. Okay. There. Bye. Bye.